فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد my beloved brothers and sisters we've previously taken two lessons we spoke about um, the tawhid al rububiyah and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to be speaking about tawhid al asma wa sifat the tawhid of allah's names and attributes singling allah tabarak wa ta'ala in his names and attributes what does that mean and what does that entail and what does one need to do in order to come with this tawheed correctly? And what is the thing that can nullify it? Inshallah ta'ala, in this lesson we will go through it. Now let's focus and look at, inshallah ta'ala, the board. Here we have Asma'ullah, Allah's names, Wasifatuhu and his characteristics. Allah's names and his characteristics. When a person is coming with Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat, there are three things that are needed from him. If any of those three are missing, then that person hasn't come with Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. Three things. The first thing is, Ithbatu, it is to affirm, Ma athbatahu Allah li nafsihi, aw nafa, aw nafi ma nafahu Allah an nafsihi. It is to affirm that which Allah has affirmed for Himself or to negate that which Allah negated from Himself. So that, let me say that again, is to affirm for Allah that which He affirmed for Himself. And it is to negate, nephew means to negate, that which Allah negated from Himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the affirmation and the negation, we bring it from the textual evidence. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms from something for himself, we affirm it. For instance, Allah says in Ayatul Kursi, He says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Allah affirms for himself here that there is none worthy of worship except him. He is al-hay, one that is alive. Hayatun Kamil, a complete life. Qayyum, one that stands for the affairs of his creation. Two characteristics. They are they've come in the form of affirmation. Allah affirmed that two characteristics for himself. Those two attributes, he's affirmed it for himself. Do we affirm Al Haya? Do we affirm life? And do we affirm Qayyumiya? That Allah stands for the affairs of his creation. Do we affirm those two characteristics? The answer is yes, we do. The answer is, yes we do. And then the question is, why do you? Because Allah affirmed it for himself. In that same ayah, Allah wa ta'ala, he says, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Sleeping and the muqaddima, the introduction to sleeping. Sina means what? When the person is about to daze off or he's about to snooze off. Allah doesn't snooze, nor does he sleep fully. And those are two negations. Do we negate sinna and a norm from Allah wa Taala? Yes, we do. The question is, why do you? Because Allah wa Taala negated from Himself. So we have affirmed for Him that which He affirmed for Himself, and we've also negated from Him that which He negated from Himself. Subhanahu wa Taala. Now that we've said whatever Allah affirms for Himself, we affirm for Him. And that which Allah negates from Himself, we negate it from Him. What also is anything that the Prophet affirms for Allah, we affirm for Him. And anything that the Messenger وسلم, negates from Allah, we also negate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first. If you don't affirm for Allah that which He affirmed for Himself, and you don't negate from Allah that which He negated from Himself, then you've not come with the first part of Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. 
The second one is Nafyul Mumatalah Fil Khasais Negating resemblance in that which Allah is unique in. Negating any form of resemblance in that which Allah is unique in. There are characteristics which Allah is unique in subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't give those characteristics to anybody other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those characteristics and those attributes which Allah wa ta'ala has in which he's unique is in like uluhiyya. He's the only one who deserves to be worshipped alone. We don't give these characteristics to anybody else. Because his name Allah, it means Al-Ma'luh, ay al ma'bud The one who is taken as the one to be worshipped alone. The one that is worshipped alone. Ilah means Ma'luh, a ma'bud These characteristics, we don't give it to anybody other than Allah. Because he's the only one who deserves to be worshipped, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other characteristics and the attributes are like that. For instance, even creation. No one creates except Allah wa ta'ala. This is a characteristic that's uniquely for him alone. You might say to yourself, well, so-and-so has made this, and this camera that you're using has been made by uh, uh, Canon, for instance. They've created it. They made it. We'll say to them that the creation's creating is deficient, whereas the creation of the creator is complete in its essence, in the way he, can, he does it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there wasn't a time when he couldn't have created. He was always a creator. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the human, he's weak in that sense because these characteristics, they come to him later in his life. And also they come to an end. There's a time when he can't create anymore. Even in his creation, he's restricted in what he can create. Allah is not like that. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we do not resemble Allah in any of his characteristics with his creation. Because these characteristics are uniquely for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the second. The third one is The third one means to disconnect, to break off any type of desire wanting to know how Allah's characteristics are. Get rid of that. Qat means to cut. Tama means the desires and the will of wanting to know how Allah's characteristics are. Don't even try to think about it. Because you won't be able to perceive it. The scholars, they say the reason why you can't perceive it is because if you want to know how Allah's characteristics are, there are three things you need. There are three things you need in order to know how Allah's characteristics are. The first one is, the first thing you need is, Allah has to tell you how his characteristics is. And we don't find that. Allah has not told us how his characteristics are. Second one is, somebody who saw Allah should tell us how Allah's characteristics are. And there is no one who saw Allah who is telling us about he, how his characteristics they look like. So we don't know how they are. And the third one which is, there is nothing we can look at to take an analogy from to know Allah's characteristics, subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they look. So because those three are absent, knowing the how of Allah's characteristics is also absent. But in the Salaf, they used to say, if anybody asks you how is Allah's characteristics, the question that you should respond by saying to them is, tell me how Allah looks and I'll tell you how his characteristics are. Or show me Allah and describe to me Allah, and I'll tell you how his characteristics are. Because the characteristics are a branch of Allah's essence. If you don't know Allah's essence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will, know, you will not know his characteristics. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, my brothers, is what? Don't try to even consider in knowing how the characteristics of Allah. We know Allah ascends high above, the last, sorry, Allah descends below the last third of the night. We don't know how He does that. This is something that befits His majesty. And we don't even ask how. We don't say China is this time and Britain is this time and in America is this time and in Canada is this time and in Australia is this time and in New Zealand is this time. So how does Allah come down? We don't ask these questions because 
This comes back to how. And because we don't know Allah's how, there is no way for us to comprehend that. But we believe in the textual evidences and we surrender to it. Now that I've spoken about my beloved brothers and sisters, the three things that are needed from any single person, any individual who wants to come with Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat, the three, th the three things that are needed from them. The first one being, Ithbatu ma Allahu li nafsi. Affirming for Allah that which He affirmed for Himself, and also negating from Allah that which He negated from Himself. The second one is what? Nafi al Mumathalati fil Khasais. Negating any resemblance in the distinct characteristics, the unique characteristics of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And the third one is Qat Uttama'i an Ma'rifat al Kaifiyah. Getting rid of this desire of wanting to know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's characteristics are. So those are the three things that are needed from anybody who wants to come with Tawheed al-Asma'i uh, wa Sifat. Now that I've spoken about that and I've explained it, I'm going to now move on to what is it that can negate your al-Asma'i wa Sifat? What is it that if you come with, it will, fall, it will, it will bring onto you, it will bring onto you uh, uh, a nullification or the nullifying of your your belief of or the oneness of Tawheed al asma wa Sifat. There are two things. There are two things that if a person comes with, his Tawheed al asma wa Sifat is nullified. That's why I wrote here, Nawaqidu Tawheed al asma wa Sifat. Two things are what nullify Tawheed al asma wa Sifat. The first one is at tamthil And I've touched on it over here, which is basically resembling Allah's creation, uh, uh, sorry, resembling Allah's characteristics to His creation. Resembling Allah wa ta'ala, His characteristics to, the, to that of His creation. For example, a person says, Allah wa ta'ala, His hand is like my hand. This now, it nullifies your Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Because you're not doing Tawheed of it. You're not singling Allah in this name, and you're not singling Allah wa ta'ala in this attribute. Um, because we know Allah's characteristics are uniquely His. As He said in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like Him. There is nothing like Him. وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ And Allah is all here and all seer. Allah hears everything and He sees everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we negate from Allah any form of resemblance to His creation. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person comes with a tamthil, trying to resemble Allah towards to his creation and saying Allah has the same characteristics as his creation, then this individual has now nullified his Tawheed al asma wa Sifat. The second one is At-Ta'atil. At-Ta'atil. What does At-Ta'atil mean? Ta'atil is when two things are present. These two are both called the Ta'atil. Ta'atil means when a person he diverts. A ta'atil means when a person. So the ta'atil, there's two of them. It is a ta'wil and a tafwil. Ta'wil means sarf al lafdi an zahiri Diverting a word from its apparent meaning. Diverting a word from its apparent meaning. For example, the word yad. The word yad is a hand. The person comes and he says hand here doesn't mean the word yad doesn't mean hand, it means what? It means al quwwah strength. He's now diverted that word from its apparent meaning. I want you to all pay attention to this. The word Asad. This word Asad, lion. The word here we have written here is lion, Asad. The word Asad has a 80% meaning of a word that it can take and it has a 20% of another meaning that it can take. The reason why I'm using these percentages is to allow you to understand it. It's not necessarily definitely this a percentage, but definitely a higher percentage on this side over this side. 
The word asad right now, 80% it means a lion. If a person comes up to you, says to you, Ra'aytu, I saw al asada, I saw a lion. You would remember the, cre cre uh, the creature the, that you see on wildlife that preys other animals, that dangerous, terrorizing animal, Asad, which is a muftaris. But there's also a 20% which it can mean I saw a courageous individual, a brave person. It has that meaning in it. If I divert from the 80% meaning that is in it, and I divert to the 20% meaning, this is now called ta'wil. This is now called what? At ta'wil. Pay attention, my beloved brothers and sisters, because this is very important. I am allowed to divert from the 80% to the 20% if there is in the context something that shows me that it's the 20% this time. So for example, if I say I saw a lion, then you should leave it at 80%. Because that's what it's originally at. That is what it really is. But if I then add on to that sentence by saying, Yakhtubu, I saw a lion giving a reminder or a sermon. Automatically, you're going to take it out from this and you're going to put it here. Now the word Yakhtubu, given a khutbah, is called a qarina. Qarina meaning it diverted it from its apparent meaning and it diverted it to the meaning which uh, it originally doesn't hold or that it holds on a very low and a minute scale. So what happens is, if you can't find anything within the context to prove that it is the 20%, then you leave it at its 80%. So for example, Raitul Asad, I saw a lion. You don't debate about it being the lion that we know, the one that people fear, the very uh, uh, courageous animal, the, the king of the lion, uh, the king of the jungle. But then if I add that word to it, giving a khutbah, automatically you know a lion will not be giving a khutbah to a people uh, and wouldn't know how to do that. Because this is now called a sarif amakarina. Allah's characteristics are like that. We leave it at its apparent meaning. Unless there comes a meaning within the context that diverts it. If a person diverts it from its apparent meaning and they go to the very small percentage this is now called ta'wil. What they've done is ta'wil. Are you with me? And this is a form of a ta'til, distortion. It's a form of distortion. The second type that they tread on or they take is a tafwid. If you can all see, it is a tafwid. Tafwid means the meaning. And the wording that are in this verse, we surrender it to Allah. That's another path that a group of people follow. What they say is, Allah knows what he means by it. So let me give you the example that we were using before. Somebody comes up to you and says to you, what's the word asid? And you say, Allahu A'lam. I have surrendered the knowledge to Allah. I don't know. So they say Allah's names and attributes are what? They are from the verses which we don't know its meaning. So we just surrender its meaning to Allah. We're reading it, but we don't know what it means. Okay? Uh, it's like saying, I don't know what a lion means. I don't know what it is. And nobody else does. Because that's what they say Allah's names and attributes are not known by anybody. Now this path is incorrect. Because the reason why they're incorrect is because Allah's names and attributes are 90% of the Qur'an. And that 90% of the Qur'an is, un not, is not understood. So Allah sent us a book down that contains 90% of His names and attributes and we don't know what they mean. Well, the scholars, they said that Tafwid is more evil than a Ta'wil. Because Tafwid is attributing to the Prophet it is also attributing to the companions ignorance of the Qur'an. And it is also slander, slandering Allah wa ta by saying, He sent down a book unto us. He commanded us to ponder on this book. But 90% of it, we don't know what it means. So this is very dangerous. This is very uh, dangerous. 
So the people who've taken the, chap the path of either ta'wil or tafwid, what they fell into is known as a ta'til. It, it means, ta'til means, it is to divert and to go away from um, the Qur'an. And it's to turn away from the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's one thing that I want to conclude with my, by mentioning which is Tamthil and at ta'til Tamthil and at ta'til They both are called together They are called Al-Ilhad Al-Ilhad Anybody who takes the path of a tamthil and at ta'til he has fallen into ilhad. Ilhad is to disbelieve. And that is what Allah prohibited us when it came to his name. He said in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ Allah says, he, has, he says about himself, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Allah has righteous names. And call on to Allah with those righteous names of His. And Allah tells us to stay away from the path of those who disbelieve in Allah Ta'ala's names and attributes. So brothers and sisters, as a summary, what we've learned here is إِثْبَاتٌ بِغَيْرِ تَمْثِيلٌ وَنَفْيٌ بِغَيْرِ تَعْطِيلٌ This is the summary of what we took today. We affirm without falling into any, any resemblance. And we negate without falling into any distortion. I conclude there inshallah ta'ala. I hope the class was crystal clear. If you have any questions and you want to know more, you can always put your questions down to the comment section inshallah ta'ala. And I am more than happy to respond and answer back to you inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was incorrect is from minni wa min ash shaytan. It's from me ash shaytan. And Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.